I'm going to start on time just so you know you can get off to your other classes and we can get everything um, seen before you have to leave. Um, I am and have been a designer for Batik Textiles for almost 10 years now and my daughter Danica uh, Bartlemy is now designing and her first line uh, has come out this market which we have a um, sample of one of the quilts done by Swan Amnity with her design Galapagos. So that is uh, our batik that we are presenting here along with four other collections. Um, the reason I wanted to do this class is because I think as a quilt store owner, which I was, I owned a, my own quilt store. I lived in Malaysia for two years and fell in love with batiks. When I came back to the States, I opened my own shop and I was surprised by the people that knew nothing about batiks. I was madly, passionately in love with them and I couldn't understand why no one knew anything about it. So I started educating my customers. My main uh, product that I sold was brights, florals, and batiks. So I needed to know about them in order to sell them. And, uh, and I really, um, I absolutely loved the colors. I loved what you could do with them. I loved mixing them with prints. So um, anyway, so this is uh, something that I believe passionately in, that if you do not know what a batik is, your customers will not know, or they will come in and expect you to know, and if you don't have answers for them, or you, you know, uh, they're going to go somewhere else. So I think it's really important that as quilt store owners, we educate ourselves and our customers as to the things that we're selling and why we're selling them, and why batik? You know, uh, there's a big thing, push for batik. Why are people liking batiks? Why do they buy them? Why are they more, sometimes more expensive than other regular fabrics? Um, what's a good batik? What's a not a good batik? So basically, I just want to real quick run over um, the original history. Batik means wax resist. It um, has been shown up in Egypt, China, first century, but only in wrapping of bodies to preserve them with the wax and then drawing on the, the mummified cloth. But the first uh, um, country to actually show it as what I have brought here is uh, Java, Indonesia in the 12th century. And they used it as establishing um, their uh, culture to, to establish a hierarchy. So the, the better the batik print, the higher up you were on the, on the scale. So some of these are actually traditional batiks brought from Bali, but they are prints. They are not, they're reproductions. They're not actually because they're very expensive to do it, and they'd all be hand done. But I'm going to show you So traditional batik is all hand done. It is not stamped. It is all hand drawn. And it is drawn with a chanting tool, which you can come up and look at. These tools are different sizes, and you can see them when you come up. And they hand draw all of these designs. So that was their original um, tradition, was to do that and do it for their garments. These are two and a half meters and they're sold like that. So you can get a number of different colors and different designs and each batik has a story to it, the specific prints. Um, so what's really cool is if you ask about which print it is, they will give you the story, the history behind it. <clears throat> Um, and then we came along and decided that we wanted the stamp. This is called a chop. And I think um, at some point in time they did do it out of wood, but they found that copper works better. So they make a chop and they dip it in wax and they stamp their fabric. So 
So what I'm going to do is show you a whole um, line of the process, and then I'm going to pass out samples of the process so you can see it up close how they do it. Um, so let's start. This first uh, is the white cotton. Everything starts with the white cotton. We buy the highest grade cotton um, that you can get, and everything starts there. Then the drawing is done. Now I did this for nine years, and now my daughter is, so we do our own drawings. So they are not ethnic, they are not traditional, they are us. <laughs> they represent a um, personality. So you will see that different companies have different um, you know, styles in their drawings, different styles in their stamps, but they are all drawn. And then they are taken to the man who makes the stamp, and he takes the drawing which is sitting next to him, and he, I don't know how they do it, but <laughs> it's amazing to watch, but they make an exact replica of the drawing. And you can see up close the tools that he works with. There's the end result, is a stamp that you can use This is one of ours. So the process starts with an original dye. So they start and they dye it a specific color. Now these look like they are solid, pretty much solid. Um, they don't have uh, multiple colors in them. One is purple, one is blue, one is cream. But they can do multiple dyes on one piece of cotton and that's how it starts. These are their vats that they dip it for the dye, and it is a cold water dye. It is a uh, fiber reactive dye, so that it blends with the molecules in the cotton, and you do not need to boil it to get it to set. Then they lay it out in the sun, and uh, I used to worry about my fabric getting dirty. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. <laughs> And they scrunch it up and put some uh, chemical on it, soda ash, and it reacts with the sun, and that's how you get your modeling in the batiks. If they did not do this process, it would be flat, just flat dyed fabric. So there's various places that do various laying out, but here's one that does it on the grass. This one is on concrete. And you can see him scrunching that fabric up, and then they sprinkle the soda ash on the top. And that gives your depth and your modeling. This is the stamping room. Those tables are all uh, placed with foam rubber, about two inches thick, and that's wet. So when they place the fabric, as in the green, over the top of the wet, it keeps the fabric moist. Then they dip it in a hot vat of wax, and they stamp. Usually, um, bolts are anywhere from 14 to 16 yards, so they will stamp that 16 yards, all by hand, and all hopefully in perfect order, <laughs> so that it's not crooked. So here's a number of different um, batikers stamping their product. You can see up close, very labor intensive and can you imagine doing 16 yards like this <laughs> and it's beeswax they use beeswax they don't use paraffin so it is a goldish tone and there's a finish then they hang it bleach it hang it so the bleach takes out the, all the original color except for where the wax was. After it's dry, they re-dye it the second color. And then they boil the wax out. And you're left with a background and a motif color. The motif color was the first dye. The background is the last dye. So it's reversed. That's wax resist. <laughs> 
We um, are the only company that has uh, copyright on this process. It is called Sunprint, and uh, it's been around for 10, 11 years now, I think, 11 years. And um, the process is they take a dyed fabric, 16 yards, and it's freshly dyed, still wet, and they lay indigenous plants on top of that, as you can see, and it reacts with the sun, as you can see, up close. This is what they do, and this is how it turns out. Can you pass this around? Mm-hmm.